to worship him. Worship the Lord our God, the righteous one, our King. We're in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17 is where we are tonight. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 and through 17. 1 John in the New Testament. In the New Testament, the book is 1 John. The chapters 2, verses are 15, 16, and 17. That's where we are tonight. We're going to talk about your desires, your flesh, your pride, your vision. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. Many of you have heard me talk about this quite often, and that is the fact that there are three things that causes us to sin. What are those three things? Regardless of what kind of sin it is, whether it's quiet sin or broad sin or boisterous sin, there are three things that causes us to sin. What are those three things? We talk about it all the time. The lust of the eye. Lust of the eye. The lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. And the pride of life. And the pride of life. First John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, spells it out very clearly. So what were the three ways that Eve was tempted? Is, that's two. With an apple? With, by the serpent. By a serpent? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's look at it this way. When Eve was tempted, how was she tempted? And the clue is there were three ways by which she was tempted. The eye. Lust of the eye. The flesh. Lust of the flesh. Of and the pride of life. When Jesus in Matthew chapter 6, I mean Matthew chapter 3 and Matthew chapter 4, there were three ways that Jesus was tempted. What are those three ways? Lust of the eye. Lust of the eye. Lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. And the pride of life. You were tempted today. What three ways in which you may be tempted? Lust of the eye. Lust of the flesh and the pride of life. You get it yet? Yes. The only way you're going to be tempted is in one of these three ways. And when temptation is fulfilled, it becomes sin. So how long has man been tempted this way? All this time. How long? Since Adam and Eve. Since the days of Adam and Eve, right? How long ago was that? Yesterday? No. 
long time, right? Mm -hmm. So we've been tempted, and when I say we, I mean our four parents, Adam and Eve. Mankind has been tempted in these three ways for a long time, mm -hmm. from the days of Adam and Eve. What it says is the devil has no new tricks. Big Daddy would say, it's just the same old soup, not even warmed over. The same, what does that mean? Some of you over 40. Some of you over 40, what does that mean? Same old soup, just warmed over. Get made another day. What does that mean? The same thing. Same thing. Just recur. Okay, let me tell you this. It's not talking about food, okay? Okay. <laughs> He would say, it's the same old soup, boy. Just warm no, or it's not warm no. Same old soup. Brother Whitlock always trying to figure out my little <laughs> slang. So Brother Whitlock, what does this mean? I never heard that one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> brother, brother Miles, help him out. You, you're a little over 40. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Okay, ask the question. Are you saying that it is warmed over or it's not warmed over? I'm saying it is warmed over and I'm saying it's not warmed over. I'm saying both of them. It's the same thing. Maybe a different uh, approach, but it is the same basic thing. Write that down, Brother Whitlock. <laughs> it's the same old tricks. <laughs> It may have a different approach. It may have a different method, but it's the same old thing. It is lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. The homework assignment last week that I asked you all to remember and to remind me is due today. So what was that homework? You didn't get no homework. Mm -hmm. Your homework for next week will be <laughs> list five things per lust. I know you won't tell on yourself that other people go through. Five things. Give five examples of lust of the flesh. Five examples of lust of the eye. Five examples of the pride of life. Let me see can I get you kicked off. President Putin wants to claim Ukraine. Is that lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, or pride of life? Pride. pride. Are you with me? Pride. Why does he want to reclaim Ukraine? Or why does he want to claim Ukraine? He wants to go down in history as the president that won this place. And he's doing it at all costs. Baby, doesn't care. Newborns, he doesn't care. Pride will drive a man deep into a deep, dark valley. And that's what has happened. Man sees girl, man like girls, man end up holding girl's hand. Which one is that? Okay, we got three things we're doing. With three things we're dealing with, okay? So the answer is going to be one of those three. Man sees girl. Eye. Lust of the eye. He sees. He sees. He, this is lust of the eye. Mm -hmm. Lust of the eye. Man sees girl. The late pastor E.B. Hill said it like this. He says, Jesus says if a man looks at a man, a woman, let me make sure you get this right. If a man looks at a woman and has a thought, he's already committed adultery. And this is what Jesus says. And this is what, uh, what the late Pastor E.B. Hill says. When a man looks at a woman and he has a thought, he's already committed adultery. So we know Jesus is right, right? But Dr. E.B. Hill says this. I don't really have a problem. When a man looks at a woman and has a thought, 
He says, I have a problem when a man looks at a woman and has no thought. Okay, what is he saying? What is he saying? Something wrong with him, right? Is that right? Why is something wrong with him? Why is, why is something wrong with him if he looks at a woman and has no thought? I mean, he just, it's just like a chair sitting, sitting on the side of the road. Why is that a problem? So we're like, why is it that a man can look at a woman, has no thought, and Dr. Hill says there's a problem? Why? Why is that the case? I don't know him. <laughs> but if, 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 if I, my guess is, if I did know him, maybe he's thinking that there's a problem that he's not attracted to a female. Right, that's a problem. Because I must remind you, and I don't mind reminding you, when God created a woman, he created a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what size she is, her shape. God put together a miracle when he created a woman. Masterpiece. I mean, it was, if God had created anything else better, then he kept it for himself. Mm -hmm. That's just my opinion, you know. That's, that's, just, that, that's just what I believe. And it doesn't matter if she's a size zero or size 50. Guess what? When God created a woman, he created a masterpiece that must be treated with tender, loving care. Sisters ought to be shouting all around the room right now. They to, I mean, you ought to be saying amen. Some, you ought to be go, something ought to be going on. So let's look at this text. See, John talks to freshly committed Christians. The Apostle John says, verse 15, do not love the world or the things in the world. Do not love the world or the things in the world. Now, in order to really understand this one verse, you must do your word study. What do I mean say, when I say word study? What does, that, what does that mean? You must do word study. Right, so you have to use your Strong's Concordance. First of all, there are three definitions for the word world. There are three definitions for the word world. Number one, the word world means this physical world. Number one, it means the physical world, the earth, the planet. So when you use the word world, the first thing you see is this world, the earth, this world, the planet, this physical world. That's the first thing we, we look at when we talk about the world. Psalm 24 and 1 says, For the earth is the Lord in the fullness thereof and everything that dwells within it. The earth is what? The earth, the earth is the world. The earth is the world, the planet. The planet we live on. People always, athletes always want to say in, in um, LeBron James, Crying LeBron James will always tell you, I'm the best basketball star on the planet. She's the fastest on the planet. She's the fastest on the world. So the first definition of world is the physical world, the earth, the planet. The second definition of the world is human. Humans, mankind, human beings, man's kind. When you look at John 3, 16, God did not have Jesus to die for this physical planet, but the Bible says he died for the whole world. He died for all of mankind. All of mankind. It's humans, the world, the human world, the Number two is human, mankind. For God so loved mankind until 
He gave his son, Jesus Christ, to die for mankind. But tonight, John, in 1 John chapter 2, talks about that third definition of the word world. This word world means cosmos in the Greek. K-O-S-M-O-S. -O -S, cosmos in the Greek. This word is cosmos. This world means the arrangement of things. This system that we live in. The decoration, the adornment. It's a system. It's a system. We live in a system today. The devil is the god of the world, meaning he's god of this system. Of this cosmos, this arrangement of things. The devil have people's mind. This unsaved world. The devil controls it. The devil has attacked us. Therefore, we are in this world system, this arrangement of things. The cosmos. So John tonight talks about this arrangement, this system, this cosmos. He says to us tonight, do not love the world. Do not love this system or the things in this system. What's another system that we have is broken, that we, we know about? There's a system that's broken. The arrangement of things, the, the system that is broken. There's um, a broken system. Parents and their families, parents and children. Okay, there's a broken system. It's a breakdown in the system. I wanted to leave this to Sunday, but it's it's in my system. <laughs> Senator Cory Booker. He, he says to Judge Johnson, he says to her, hold on, my sister. Don't worry, my sister. What he was saying is, this system is trying to hold you back. Mm -hmm. Then he went to, had the audacity to say, God got you. <laughs> what I'm saying to you is that the world system is against godliness. So anything that lifts itself against God is a part of this world system. The Apostle Paul says anything that does not lift Jesus Christ and the fact that he's come and he is the Savior and he is the Son of God is not of God. It's a part of this world system. This system is broken. We walk around in this system. We live in this system. We breathe this system. John says, don't love this system. Don't let this system attach itself to you. Because this system is like a parasite. It attaches itself to you and it drains you and sucks you dry. You know a parasite can't live unless it has a host. It needs a host to attach itself to. This world system, it, it can't live, it can't keep existing unless we allow it to. We become the host for it. Isn't that something? Are you a host for this system? When they use the word systemic, what does that mean, systemic? It means the system has been set up it's not broken. The system has been set up for certain groups of people to fail. It's systemic. It's, it's in the system. It's, it's an arrangement. It's a decoration of things. It's an adorning of things. The devil has given us a system that this system will cause us to fail. How many, how many of you know that drug addicts, drug dealers, Drug takers going to come to a, a screeching halt, a bad end. 
Isn't it bad? I mean, the system is set up that way. I mean, the system is going. The system shows us bright lights, fine cars, fine houses, get rich quick money. And guess what? It's going to come to a quick end. We teach our children all the time. We teach our children, if it's not yours, if it doesn't belong to you, leave it alone. Go to work. Work for what you get. Don't try to take other folks' stuff. But let me tell you, the, light, the nightly news, the evening news, the 3 o'clock news, the 11 o'clock news, the 12 o'clock news shows people over and over again trying to get by and beat the system. God has set it up. God says, you shall live by the sweat of your brow. You're going to work. And guess what, brothers? God gave man a job before he gave him a woman. Look at that. He said, you're going to work for a living. He gave him, he gave him a job before he gave him a woman. Adam, you go out here and name all these places. You go out here and name all these animals. Adam, whatever you do, Adam, go ahead and, and, and make sure you do the things that you have to do that I'm advising you to do. Adam, whatever you do, do your job. Do your job. Get your job done. And after he gave him a job, he gave him a woman. Isn't that something? He didn't give him a woman. And then said, go find a job. He didn't give him a woman. And then he says, uh, go and, and get a job. He gave him a job. And God was very clear, wasn't he? He said, go work. But women drag, dragging men out from under dirt and out from under rocks. <laughs> Don't ask him what his, his employment is. Doesn't ask him what his occupation is. Doesn't ask him where, he, where he's in school. They don't, they don't ask him whether he, have a big, he has a vision. They just say, come on, I like how you walk. <laughs> First of all, it's reversed because the man finds her, not she, she finds him. him. But that's all a part of this system. We got a messed up system. It says, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Matthew says that you can't love stuff and love the Lord too. Now John says, if you love the world, if you love this arrangement of things, if you love this cosmos, if you love this decoration, this, this spiritual awareness, if you love that, you can't love God. So you got to choose. Some people have decided to make no decision. And no decision is a decision in itself. He says, if you love the world, anyone, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Who do you love? I can make a song out of that, can't I? Who do you love? <laughs> I probably could be a pretty good rapper with that song. I probably could. Who you loving? Who, who loving you? There is a song out there. You know, there, there's a song out there. Who, who, who you loving? The question is, are you loving God or are you loving this system? You, you can't love the system and love God. You got to let the system go. And some of you have to let them go because they are so intertangled in the system. It says to us, we all love God. Sister Brown, you love God? Come on, tell the truth now. You got you to gotta really, really love. And, and how do we tell if we love God? How do we tell if somebody else loves God? I know we're not going to tell on ourselves. How do you tell when you have love for the Lord. Anybody? How you carry yourself. Say again? I said how you carry yourself. Let your life so okay, shine. So how you carry yourself. How you carry yourself. 
how you treat other people. Jesus says, and you will be known to be my disciples if you show love for one another. Love one another. You got to love people. You got you to gotta love one another. So Christians ought to love Christians. Christians ought to love non-Christians. Christians ought to love people of different races. That's right. We gotta love people. I'm not talking about faking it. I'm talking about love. Because when you fake it, people know when you are faking it. You're the only person fooling you. Everybody else got it. The moment they walk out the door, they said, they just, they just going through the process. Mm -hmm. Remember before COVID, we had, we had fellowship period mm -hmm. and people would go through the, through the process. And I'm so glad that every single person, every single visitor that I call, they say they have never had such a loving feeling as they had that day at the New Beginning Church. Boy, that makes me want to shout. That makes me want to celebrate the fact that, that hospitality has come all the way from Mississippi to Texas. We ought to be hospitable. We ought to be loving toward people. People ought not be uncomfortable around us. We ought to be loving. And I know, I know we can't put together no bipartisan right now. <laughs> Nothing. But hold on, my sister. <laughs> God got you. God got you. That's what he said. He said, God, on the worldwide web, he says, a senator, not a preacher. He said, just wait a minute. And after day after day of being beaten up by the other side, she needed some encouragement. She needed it. And check this out. You have unaccomplished people beating up on somebody that has accomplished great things. We need love. He says, love not the world, nor the things in the world. If anybody loves the world, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And he goes on to talk about what's in this world. What's in this world? That's your homework assignment. What's in this world? I could, I could probably make a song out of that one too. What's in this world? Let's see if you all know. Who was it that wrote the song a few years ago? Um, what's going on? Come on now. Don't be playing holy on me. Don't, don't get holy on me. What's going on? Why did he write that song? He wasn't just asking the question, what's going on? If you look at the video, there's fighting. There's discrimination. There are water hoses. There are dogs. There are marches. There's racism. There's prejudice. And he just asked one question. What's going on? Just one question. See, Sister, Sister Whitlock and I are going to do a duo one day. One day so. she, she, she's, she's getting ready right now. And her husband's going to play the drum for her. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm just telling you now. The man just asked the question, what's going on? Why was there a need to ask such a question? Because there was very little love to be found. Very little love. The love we talk about in the local church, love that flows from heart to heart, from breast to breast. Love that we love you even though we don't know you. People used to look for reason to bless children in church. They used to look, they, they used to run me down. If I had my shoes shining, hey, put this in your pocket. Him, him boy. No, we want to keep our money to ourselves. Because yeah. the same joker we would give money to cussed us out last week. <laughs> the same one we, used to, we, we would normally give money to 
because they are respectful or disrespectful. It's a part of that world system, this system of things that's going on. So that's the world. Look at what he says. He says, verse number 16, for all that is in the world, what is, he's setting us up to tell us what's in the world. What world is he talking about here? Is he talking about the earth, the place? He's talking about this, this Greek word is cosmos, a cosmos. He's talking about this system. He says, all that's in the world, all that is in the world, first of all, he says, lust of the flesh. Word lust means your desires, your longing, your yarn. Your longing, your yearning, your deep desires is lust. A lot of people get married behind this thing. They think they're in love, but they're really in lust. And lust is just a, it's a sinful desire. Lust is a longing, it's a yearning. The Gap Band in the 80s came out with the song, I'm yearning for your love. That was on the same album. We had big 33s at that time. It was on the same, you couldn't leave it in your car. It was on the same album. I'm, the, the, the Gap Band song, Burn Rubber On Me. It was on the same album that, that the song was, Nothing Calms the Sleepers But a Dream. And after we got through listening at the record hop, y'all had record hops? <laughs> Lord, That's what a change has been made. I must be pretty old. <laughs> when, they got, when they put the whole album on and they let the whole album play, y'all do know what the albums are, right? Mm -hmm. You know what albums are? <laughs> oh my goodness. Album with a big old record like this. And it's called a 33, and it got a little bit of hole in it, and you have to drop the spender down so you put the 33 on there, and then you switch the switch over here to 33 so it won't be going as fast as the 45. Mm -hmm. I got one in my office. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, I'm going to show you what a 33 is when we, when, when we close out. <laughs> so this album, when the album started playing, you would, you would move from burn rubber on me to that nothing comes to sleepers. And then the gap plan would say, I'm yearning. In other words, I'm lusting. <laughs> I, am, I have this strong, sinful desire. It says, I'm, I'm longing for you. Lust is a, a longing, sinful desire that our flesh long. We long for it. We we like it. You know, we have a sin nature. Even though we, we are saved, we have a sin nature. And our sin nature love to sin. Mm -hmm. we, we love sin. We, we like sin. How you know when somebody likes it? They say, oh, boy, that was a good old day. What are they talking about then, Brother Miles? They say that's the good old days. Sin, they used to come in and enjoy about sin. <laughs> they even get excited about it now. <laughs> They, they have a, a lusting for it, a longing for it. They have a desire for it. So he says, lust of the flesh. This word flesh means human nature. This word flesh means carnal. This word flesh means frailties. Word flesh means carnal. You see, when a man is carnal, he's saved, but he does fleshly things. He does sinful things. And, and when you look at this text, it's saying, I long to do sinful, fleshly, carnal things. He's saying, my desire, my heart is set on doing longing, sinful, carnal things. It says, the first problem we have with life is we have lust of the flesh. We have lust of the flesh. Give me some examples of what lust of the flesh is. What's lust of the flesh? Lust of the flesh. Diana? Lust of the, what's lust of the flesh? 
Lust of the flesh. Eating a lot of chocolate. Eating a lot of chocolate. You trying to pick on <laughs> Where'd she get that from, brother? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you hear that, sister? Yeah. <laughs> Let me just tell you what I'm saying then. <laughs> Lust of the flesh. She says, can you think of anything else? Eating, eating a little lot of chocolate. Whatever makes you feel good. Example, it's, it's feel, it makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. it's, it's your flesh. It's, mm -hmm. It makes you feel good. When you look at Adam and Eve, when you look at how Jesus was tempted, when you, when you look at presidents and how they do things, it's, it's what, they, what their flesh, when their flesh is controlling them, mm -hmm. their flesh is doing what makes them feel good. Mm -hmm. Who's going to give me some examples other than chocolate? I mean, two people have given me chocolate. Another man's wine. Another man. Okay. The flesh. The flesh. Sir, I can't hear you. Drinking. Drinking. That's the flesh. Does that make you feel good, brother? Oh, okay. I, just, I, I knew I knew you all weren't going to tell me about yourselves. You're going to tell me about somebody else. So I understand. So, alcohol. Less of the flesh. How does it make you feel, brother Whitlock? Oh, I don't know. Y'all don't do it. Did it make you feel good then? <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Yep. In the beginning? In the beginning, it makes you feel in the, good? Yeah, in the beginning, when you start to uh, drink, mm -hmm. it's, you feel good. You feel, feel good. free. You feel uh, uh, you can do everything you want when you drink. You, um, um, you are uh, another person. You're another no. person. Yes. Let me tell you something. I don't ever want to be another person. <laughs> In other words, there's a control mechanism, right? Yep. And it confirms that we live in this other system. Yep. So when we drink, we smoke, we, we do weed, we do drugs, we, we do whatever it is out there, it takes us to another dimension, mm -hmm. another adornment, mm -hmm. an, another cosmos, mm -hmm. another world. And some people think they can drink their troubles away. But after they get through drinking, they got more trouble than they had before they started. Some people think that they can get so high until I don't have any more worries. Guess what? The bill is still sitting there when you come down. She's still nagging when you come down. He still is not coming back home when you come down. So you have to live in reality, and the reality is we long to fulfill our flesh. Our carnality is real. What else does he say? He says, the things that are in this world, number one, is lust of the flesh. Number two is lust of the eye. Lust of the eye. This eye deals with vision. It deals with sight. It deals with envy. Your sight, what you see. Give me an example of what I see and how that can be lust of the flesh, uh, lust of the eye, rather. How can what I see create a longing to do wrong? What I see. Who's talking? I, I would say when we were fast, uh, on the 21-day fast, uh, I wanted some, I wanted to eat the food, real food, some I really, really wanted, even you, with the ginger ale. I wanted to have a spark so bad to send the bill. Uh, it's not, it doesn't necessarily have to be. We talking about lust of the eye now. Yeah, lust of the eye. You see something you really want. Oh, okay. You know you're not okay. supposed to have it. Okay. Uh -huh. Let me give you another example. Does a guy in AA have a business to go into a liquor store? No. Nope. No. 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 Nope. Why? Why a guy with AA has no business going to a liquor store? Because it's a temptation. It's a temptation. So what, when you see it, you want it. You have a longing for it. Just like the commercials. Commercial. I got to stop watching chocolate commercials too? <laughs> what commercials can I watch? <laughs> oh, I can handle that one. Maybe every time a commercial come on, I need to fast forward or, or leave the room or something. 
So commercials, what you see, the devil is always advertising something. And guess what? The devil doesn't get anywhere with me by advertising drugs and alcohol. He won't even bring that near me. That's not even a, a something that he wants to even introduce to me. You see, the devil knows who you are and what your desires are. And guess what? He wouldn't get anywhere with me in alcohol and drugs. I've told you all over and over again, if they said that I died from an alcohol overdose, a drug overdose, that's ground for an investigation. Because I didn't put it in my system. Somebody else did. So what, if you have Brother Whitlock here and me here, y'all need an investigation. Because <laughs> alcohol is not our temptation. But if you come in the room and there's a piece of chocolate cake back there, <laughs> there's a mound of almond joy over here, and I'm laying in the floor, Talk about, I can't believe I ate the whole thing. And you're going to say, you ate it, Matt. <laughs> Any more witnesses in the house? <laughs> so what we see appeals to us. And when it appears to us, it, it causes our flesh to rise up. So we are dependent Many times on what we see. I just I just posted a, a, a video from one of the Super Bowl, one of the Super Bowl advertisements, one of the greatest ever Super Bowl advertisements, one of the world's greatest. When it shows all these legends of football, all the way back to Jim Brown, all of them in a banquet style room, and their football shows up. And they go to tackle each other, running and passing the ball, and tears up everything in the room. Because they saw one football. Let me tell you, there is something that you can see that can cause you to sin. That's because you are human and you have lust of the eye. Anybody else want to volunteer anything? I used to eat chocolate. Chocolate? And I eat it at the store when I get ready to get it to the register. I eat it up. And I tell you, you can't charge me because I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting ready to protect you. I thought you were gonna you gonna eat it up and take it to the cashier and say, no. ring this up. No, I, I pay for it, but I told him you can't charge me because I don't have it. Because oh, okay. it's in me. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, so you did pay for it. <laughs> Lord Jesus. What kind of members they growing over there? <laughs> Lust of the eye. Yep. Lust of the eye. You, you know why they put all these things right at the cash register? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They put every, they have every display. Mm -hmm. As you move from the meat aisle, something you need, from the vegetable aisle, something you have to have, they push it all up near the cash register. Mm -hmm. And they have a line. They, they create the, the aisle by putting all this stuff that you got to see. Because they know if they can get to your eye. Mm -hmm. And they put it where you have to walk by. Mm -hmm. And so many people have gone to the store to get one item and walked out with 18. You sure right about that. And the way I try to avoid it is when I'm asked, do we need a basket? No. <laughs> we came to get a bunch of bananas. One bunch of bananas. We don't need a basket for a bunch of bananas. They might be heavy. <laughs> they got to be heavy. So lust of the eye is real. It is a real deal. It is a real thing. When children go off to college, they see the student union more than they see the library. That's horrible. The devil in his system will always get us to focus our vision on the wrong thing. It's called lust of the eye. I got another one for you. Yes, ma'am. They put the sweet cereal at the eye of the child. And they the put other ones at the eye level of the children. Mm -hmm. So they put the sweets, mm -hmm. even stuff that the children need mm -hmm. or the children have. They put they put the the unsugary stuff up where the adults are, mm -hmm. but they put the sugary stuff right in front of the child. 
children have gotten beaten just because they put that stuff right there in front of them. They deliberately put it there. In all of the space, when I was working for Pepsi Cola, one of the things that I had to do, it, it was called merchandising. What we, I would have to do is go to where the truck has just dropped off merchandise and build what is known as a display. And during Christmas time, we would build these display to be Christmas looking. And we would always deal, build a display in the middle of the aisle where everybody has to walk by. In the summertime, you, you build a display, and before you walk out the door, you got to go back and build a display again. And they have running sales just because the eye is going to make contact. The third one, he says, is the pride of life. The pride of life. I gave you one example. Is a, a man wants to conquer so he can be proud. Prideful. Be proud of himself. Do we get degrees so people can be proud of us? Do we? No. Do we marry certain women so people can be proud of us, so we can have pride? But we lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> let, let me just tell you, men, in case you didn't know. It is more of a compliment to the man to have a beautiful woman, an attractive woman on his side than it is for the woman to be attractive. What did I just say? Because the brother said, wow, man. <laughs> so it's, a, it's more of a compliment. It's a pride thing. And I'm not just talking about what other folks see as beautiful. You don't date people and marry people and be with people because of other people. When women decorate their houses, they really decorate their houses, many of them, for somebody else. So people can walk in and say, ooh, ah, oh, girl, where you get that? And you ought to tell them every time, down there at the corner, uh, at the flea market. Ooh, ah. Oh. We were riding down the road the other day, and I couldn't even get in the left lane because there was a brother with some hubcap with the spikes sticking out 18 inches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you know he didn't buy that for him, right? No. He bought that for me. You know why I know he bought it for me? Because he's on the inside of the car. He can't see it. I got to deal with it. I see it. But he's proud of his car. The song used to be out. Digging the scene with the gangster lean, gangster white wall. And children think these days that song just came out 10 years ago. It's the same old soup. They just reheated it. Same song we sung. And then we, were, we had the nerve in the backwoods of Mississippi to go get a TV antenna on the back of our car. No TV anywhere. <laughs> The bigger the TV antenna, the more pride we had. And it was made like a, like, like a bee. And it would stand by that tall off the trunk of the car. And then we'd go get some. Now we don't even want white walls to show. We, matter of fact, we turned the tire inside out. Back in those days, we went and got some three-inch white wall. So we can fit in with the song. Diamond in the back. Sun rooftop, digging the scene with the gangster lean, gangster white wall, TV antenna in the back. Ooh, ooh. It's pride. Many of us dress the way we dress because of our pride. Many, many people want to want people to see them and say, ooh, what, what is that? Where you get that? You, you got Joan. They start naming all these names of people that are designers. And many people keep their tags hanging. They accidentally had their tag hanging out so you can read it. That's what they do. So you can say, oh, your tag is out. Oh, you went, mm. I see. I can't even call the names because I don't, I don't major in that. There are people who will buy stuff with other folk names on it that don't even like them. 
Tony Hill yeah, figure yeah. says, Tony Hill figure says, if I had known that your kind was gonna wear this, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have made it so well. Mm -hmm. Glory to Vanderbilt. You didn't make it far side. Don't don't mention, don't, don't mention the V L or L V. I haven't seen a person yet who can justify paying two thousand dollars for a bag. So Brown, you got one? <laughs> for a bag you carry two times a year? But you know, when you when it's your money, you do whatever you want to do with it. That's fine with me. But and it, it, my only thing is, if you pay two thousand dollars for a bag, you better have two hundred thousand somewhere else. I know that's right. If you pay two thousand for some shoes, you got to at least have twenty thousand somewhere else. That's right. <laughs> because if you don't, you're just living off pride. This is prideful. You're just living off pride. So, so the Bible says, he says, in the pride of life, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, in the pride of life, these are not the father, but is of the world. These are not of the father. These do not represent the father, but it represents the world. Now somebody's going to go home tonight and say, that pastor said I shouldn't buy what I want. That, that's not what I said. When you use mortgage money and rent money to buy other stuff, you out of order. When you got to, see, this is what people do. They, they buy what they want and they beg for what they need. Because they know you're not going to turn them down for medication. You're not going to turn them down for food. So they spend all of their money on stuff they want. And they beg you for what they need. Because they are prideful. They, they want what they want and they want it right now. And they want everybody to see it. Living, trying to keep up with the Johnsons. Or the Urbans, or the Weeks, or keeping up with other people. When, when whatever you have, you budget it. You give God 10, 15% off the top, and then you budget what you have. Pride won't sneak in that way. Buy any car you want. But if you pay that amount for a car, you ought to have 10 times as much somewhere else. If you don't, you have done yourself a prideful disservice. These things are not of God, but these things are of the world. And the world is passing away. And the lust of it is passing away also. The desires of this world, these desires are passing away. This world that we live in, this world is passing away. In other words, the, the, the writer says, don't put your confidence in temporal stuff, for it is temporary. Put your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot attack it. He says, whatever you do, don't get caught up in lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Amen. He says, in this world, is passing away. It's leaving here. Just like I don't have to get up running to get a brush in the morning. It's because it has passed away. And I used to have an afro. But I can't find it anywhere anymore. It has literally passed away. Every year, I go get a vision check. It goes from 0.05 to 0.1, no, from 0.05 to 1.0, from 1.0 to 1.5, from 1.5 to 2.0, now I'm at 2.5. My sight is passing away. Is leaving here. This stuff is temporary. 
my steps. Can't run it. I can't run it down like I used to run it down. Stuff is passing away. I can't even brag about hitting the ball anymore. I can't even brag about running down the ball in the outfield anymore. I can't brag about scooping up in, in shortstop and waiting until you get halfway there and throwing them. I can't brag about it anymore. If I, by the time I get up there and get down there and get back up, he's already down there. It, it's over. I'm probably standing there like this before I get up. No, I'm probably saying he, he, he's not going to make it. We are passing away. Our stuff is passing away. And the lust of it is passing away. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Amen. This is eternal life. This is eternal security. Amen. This is stuff for now on. This is for now on. This is eternal. Amen. When you trust God and you abide in him, let me tell you, the umpire will call you safe every time. Amen. Cora Booker says, Enjoy yourself, my sister. He says, just relax. He says, God got you. He says, your family has been impeccable. He says, your marriage has been right on target. You are good examples in the community. He says, God has you. The, the writer says, the writer says, it, he who does the will of God abide us forever. forever. No. The meek shall inherit the earth. Mm -hmm. The peacemaker mm -hmm. will be called the children of God. Mm -hmm. From now on, we will abide. And the only way for us to abide forever is trust the story. The story of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who died over 2,000 years ago. He died so we can abide forever. He died on a cross. Mean men killed him. Mean men killed him on a cross. Mean men beat him. Mean men nailed, nailed him to the cross. They put him in a borrowed tomb. And early that third day morning, he rose with all power from the grave. This Jesus I'm talking about is the one who invites us to come and love the things of God. Abide in him. And he will abide in you. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You need to get to know Jesus. Jesus, the son of God, who died for your sins. They buried him in a borrowed tomb, but early that third day morning, he rose from the dead with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. That same Jesus is available to you today. If you haven't trusted Jesus as your Savior, this is your moment. This is your opportunity. If you would, just bow your head with me and invite him into your life. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you prayed this prayer honestly believing that Jesus died and rose again, we believe that you're born again and you're on your way to heaven whenever you die. You no longer have to depend on the things of this world. You can be saved and you are saved if you committed your life to Jesus Christ. For those of you who have no church home or are in between church homes, I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction, where Jesus is the captain of the ship. If you want to join our church, please do so by inboxing me and let me know. We'll be glad to have you. And we, we will continue to keep you in prayer. Our prayer list today includes Joanne Dealworth, Henry who is Joanne's son, Gwen Dorsey, Ava Lane, the Garza family, Abe Frosto. We're praying for Sister Nicole Davis and 
bereavement, and we're praying for a bereavement for Roxy West. So we want to make sure that we lift, lift these before Christ, that God will continue to bless you. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Lord, that we are not a part of this world. We thank you, Lord, that we exist on this physical world. But Lord, we know that we are not a part of this ungodly system. Lord, we ask you to bless us and keep us. Now, Lord, we pray for those who have found themselves in a sick state. Lord, we know you as the great physician. You're the healer. You're the one who blesses us. You're the one who makes us well. Lord, we thank you now. We ask you to touch every person that we mention and those that we have not. Bless us, Father God, that, that they will be healed. Give them strength. Give them hope. And we pray for those who are bereaved. We ask you to comfort them, keep them, and bless them. Lord, we also pray, Father God, for the Hopper family. We ask you to bless them. Father, we pray that you lift up their heads and strengthen them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. It is offering time. It is time to give to the Lord in tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord. You can give electronically. By way of Zelle, our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or you can mail your offering, your gifts to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. 459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for being a part of our Bible study. Uh, let's look forward to moving forward into 1 John chapter 2. We'll be moving forward on next week if, if God says the same. Your assignments, your assignments is to find five things, five things, five things that identify for each one of these, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. You want to find five circumstances, five circumstances for each one, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And I know you're not going to tell me that it's part of you, so tell me about somebody else. Amen. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for this opportunity to give. We ask you to bless every giver. And Lord, we thank you for Bible study. We thank you for your word. We thank you for blessing us and keeping us. We ask you to bless us as we come tonight, Father God, to rejoice in you. Bless our, our choir. Bless those who will sing unto you. Bless them to realize that it's not a rehearsal, that they're singing unto the Lord. And bless us, Father God, that we will always walk with you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, Unto him, the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing by saying, Amen. Amen. And amen. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, In I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. God bless you and God keep you.